And this is a, an example from the last unit, but uh, we're going to look at this anyways because it's a good review. All right. So it says that triangle BCE is congruent to tri uh, this should be triangle DFG. And then it tells us that CEB, so it would be this angle here, is 50 degrees. Then it wants us to find the measure of angle FGD right here. Well, as it turns out, we can see that this is a 90 degree angle here. And so CEB and FGD are corresponding angles in both triangles. So, as it turns out, angle FGD would also be 50 degrees. Now, since these two triangles are congruent, as we can see here, let's say that uh, side length CE was uh, 10 uh, feet. Then what would be the measure of uh, GF? Take a moment and think about that. Well, GF here is just, uh, since, again, both of these triangles are congruent, it's going to have the same measure. It's going to be 10 feet, okay, because it's correspondingly in the same position as CE. So GF will be the same measure. All right, just as a quick review, uh, just remember that uh, we have over here these four types of transformations. We've got reflections, rotations, translations, and dilations, okay? Uh, and one other thing you'll want to remember is that only these three maintain congruence, okay? So it wouldn't matter which one of these we do. You would always have congruence. It doesn't matter if you reflect it, translate it, or rotate it, or any combination of the three. The size of the shape, okay, because again, we can look here at conditions of congruence. All the angles that are corresponding would be the same, and the side lengths also would be the same. So that brings up our dilations. Dilations, they're going to violate the second one because now the side lengths are no longer the same size, and so therefore they are not congruent. All right? Now on the other hand, we have this uh, similarity stuff, okay? And this is important for you to know because this is what we're going to be talking about today. So the angles, all the angles have to be the same as long as they're corresponding, okay? The only thing is, is the sides have to be proportional, and we'll go over what that means if you don't know what that means in just a moment, okay? So corresponding sides are proportional for similarity, uh, but for congruence, they have to be not only proportional, they have to be the same as well. All right, so in this example, we just want to know if uh, these two figures are similar. We can see that uh, clearly the side lengths are not the same, so we're not so worried if they're congruent. So what's happened to this triangle here. This one, uh, it looks like uh, actually the green one is the pre-image. So this is our pre-image. And then uh, the triangle STU will be the image, okay? So in other words, we're going to take triangle PRQ and we're going to transform it into triangle S-U-T, okay? Uh, so let's look. Uh, again, we're just looking at similarity. It looks like it's been reflected across this line here. But uh, again, the reflection is going to keep it congruent, but then it's been dilated. It looks like it's been brought down a little bit uh, in size, okay? So let's compare the side length. So let's look at... Uh, uh, side length ST is corresponding with side length PQ, all right? So we can mark these so that we know that they're corresponding sides. And the measure of ST 
is going to equal, looks like it's three units. Whereas side length PQ is going to equal six. And so how do we get those? Well, we're just counting these. It goes one, two, three. And that's side ST. And side PQ goes up one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just counting however many units that is. Okay. So we can see that uh, to get from P to Q, we would have had to cut this in half. So that would be our scale factor. And we should be able to apply this to all the side lengths on triangle PQR to get the corresponding side of SUT. Okay. So UT corresponds with QR, as you can see there. And what is the measure of RQ or QR? They're the same. Uh, well, let's see. Let's go ahead and count those. We got one. Start with R. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is ten units long. So with a scale factor of one half, how long should UT be? Well, you're just going to take 10 and multiply it by 1 half, and that should give us 5, right? So let's go ahead and count. From T to U, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, okay? So it looks like we've got a side length of 5. So, so far this is good, but we do need to check this final side length, uh, PR and SU as well, and make sure that these corresponding sides are also proportional, okay? Uh, so we're just going to apply the scale factor the same way, but how do we find these side lengths is the question. Well, in order to find PQ, so let's look. Uh, actually, we'll only need these values. PQ is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. I'm sorry, PR. PR is, that's an R. There we go. PR is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And so what we're going to have to do is take the square root of the two legs squared. So we've got PQ, which is 6. We'll square that and add RQ, which is 10. Square that. So that gives us the square root of 136, which is... It's like it's 11 point six six all right well then uh, we've got to figure out uh, the length of SU so we'll take the square root now we got to use ST and UT so we've got 3 squared plus 5 squared and it's the square root of that so that should give you the square root of 34 all right so, what's the square root of 34? Well, let's go ahead and find out. We're just going to put that in the calculator. Push the square root button. Type in 34 and push enter. And what do we get? Again, I'm, I'm rounding these to the nearest hundredth. And so, if I, this is what I get for side length SU. I've got 5.83. If I multiply this by 2, what do I get? Well, as it turns out, it's exactly 11.66, which is what I rounded PQ to. And so, yes, this has a scale factor of 2. Or, uh, on the other hand as well, we could take 11.66 and multiply it by 1 half. It would still give us that 5.83. Okay? So the scale factor is the same for all the side lengths. We can look at this then. And say that this one is uh, similar. All right, so let's go ahead and look at uh, these two trapezoids. All right, uh, we'll just uh, we'll just start at the top here, and we'll move our way around again. Uh, if the side lengths are the same, this, this one looks pretty well the same, right? 
And we could check the angles, but let's check the sides first, okay? So uh, AB here corresponds with EF. And we can see that side length AB is 3. Side length EF is 2. So uh, let's say that uh, ABCD is the pre-image and that EFGH is the image. It doesn't matter which one we choose because we're just looking for similarity. Okay, so if that's the case, to get from AB to EF, all right, all I've got to do is take EF and divide it by the length of AB. This is our proposed scale factor, okay? So it should work for all of these side lengths. Now, if we did want to find BC, and FG, we're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. But let's skip that for now and see if the other side lengths are similar first. That way it should save us some time. So let's compare HG to DC, and the scale factor should be the same. So DC, it has a length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right here. So a DC... It's five units long. Okay, so again, I can look at this and say, well, if I took five and I multiplied it by the scale factor two-thirds, then I should get uh, ten-thirds. Okay, so HG should be ten-thirds. However, when we do this, we can see one, two, three, four. Okay, well, four, which is the actual length of HG, is not equal to that ten-thirds or uh, if you had a decimal that's fine you'd have a uh, 3.3 .3 repeating and you can see that these two values are not the same so as it turns out this example the two shapes are not similar because the side lengths are not proportional okay and there you go Yeah, we can create a ratio of the sides. Again, uh, uh, when I did, when I found the scale factor, I did EF and divided it by AB. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which I chose for the numerator or denominator. Right, just a quick review of scale factors. If a scale factor is between 0 and 1, meaning it can't be equal to 0, and it can't be equal to 1, you'll end up with a shape that's small. It's smaller than the pre-image. Okay. If you have a scale factor that's equal to 1, the image and the pre-image are going to have, they're going to be the same, which means they'll be congruent. All right. If your scale factor is greater than 1, then you'll end up with something that is bigger than the original. Okay, so what are some values between 0 and 1? Okay, and we talked about this last time. You can use fractions like 1 half or 3 fourths. These are proper fractions. Uh, you can't use improper fractions because now they'd be greater than 1. Uh, maybe 5 sixths or uh, two-thirds, maybe you want something a little bit more funky, like uh, 19 twentieths, okay? And some values bigger than one, like two, or three, or four, and so forth, all right? So uh, if those numbers, if that scale factor is bigger than one, then you're going to end up with a bigger object or value than you started with. All right, so this is in your book. Uh, an art show offers different size prints of the same printing, a uh, painting. The original print measures 24 centimeters by 30 centimeters. So we can write that down right now because that's going to be crucial information. It's uh, 24 meters by 30 meters. Now let's let's try that again. Twenty-four centimeters 
by 30 centimeters. There you go. Now it's going to enlarge it with the scale factor of one and a half. Then it will enlarge that by a scale factor of three. So what's the dimensions of the largest prints? Are both of the enlarged prints similar to the original? Well, let's check. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply a scale factor of one and a half. All right. So when we do that to 24, 24 times 1.5, go ahead and put that in your calculators. That's going to give us the first dimension, which you should get 36 centimeters by 30 times 1.5, 45 centimeters. Now, as it turns out, to figure out if this is similar to this, Okay, so if the image is similar to the pre-image, we don't even need to do any calculating because we did the calculating. We know that the scale factor is the same for both length and width, so this one is definitely similar. All right, so then what's going to happen? Now that that's been enlarged, from this value, it's going to enlarge it by a scale factor of 3. All right, so this one... Uh, just take 36 centimeters, times it by 3, and you should get 108 centimeters. By 45 times 3, 135 centimeters. Okay? So, since we already know that this enlargement is similar to the pre-image, what about this second image? Is that similar to this one? Well, yes, of course it is, because if we look at this, the scale factor here is the same for this enlargement, and the scale factor is applied to both values to create this enlargement. So, yes, it would automatically be similar. Okay, again, that's because scale factor that's being applied is being applied to both the length and the width in both cases. All right, so we already talked about this, uh, these conditions for similarity, okay? If there are two polygons, in these cases, we're going to be doing more with quadrilaterals and triangles than any irregular polygons. All right. But uh, if they're similar, what you need, and again, that's all this is illustrating, is first, the angles. Each of the angles must be congruent. And then, in addition to that, for similarity, the side lengths must be proportional. Now notice what they've done here is they've taken all of the ABC from triangle ABC, these values, those sides, as the numerators. But it wouldn't matter if they were in the denominator, it would just, if we switched AB and XY, we would just have to switch the other two fractions as well. All right, so let's determine whether these two rectangles are similar. Well, if we look at all four of the angles, they're all right angles for both of the rectangles. So we know that the corresponding angles will be congruent no matter how we look at it, okay? Now, on the other hand, it looks like JK is corresponding with NP. All right, so if we took uh, NP, we'll make this simple. So we have a whole number. And divide it by the length of JK, then we'll have 6 over 3, which is 2. Well, if we look at this next value, we have side length KL, which will be our denominator. And it should be proportional to side PQ. So if we divide these, we should get 2. PQ is 10, KL is 7, this 
10 sevenths does not equal 2. So as it turns out, these two are not similar. Now when it asks for you to explain these, okay, uh, notice I've already written down what I think about this. 10 sevenths does not equal 2. So in my explanation, really all we're trying to do here is say, well, just look at my work. That's a good enough explanation for me. Okay, well, let's look at, uh, let's look at these triangles, all right? So we can look at this. We have uh, two isosceles triangles because this side is congruent to that side. And this side is congruent to this one, okay? So 8 is 8 and 6 is 6. They have two side lengths that are the same. So these are isosceles triangles. So we're not so worried about the angles here again. All we're really worried about is the sides. So notice AB is the side of triangle ABC that is not uh, similar to its other sides. It doesn't have the same length as the other sides. If we take that value and divide it by xy, because it's the corresponding side, in this triangle xyz, then what we have is side length AB is 8, xy is 12. We'll divide both of those by 4, and we'll get 2 thirds. All right. Now if we look at uh, these two sides, let's take side AC and compare it with XZ. So we'll take AC and divide it by XZ. Now before I move on with this, one thing I need to point out is that notice I'm taking sides from triangle ABC and placing them in the numerator and side lengths from triangle XYZ and putting those in the denominator, okay? Uh, you have to be consistent with that, otherwise you'll always, well, you'll usually always get uh, triangles and quadrilaterals that are not similar. So side length AC, it tells us that it's 6. So we have 6, and we're going to divide this by side length XZ, which is 8. And that is going to equal, I'll divide both of those by 2 giving me three-fourths. So notice, this fraction is not the same as this fraction. So they're not the same, therefore these ones are not similar. All right, as far as I know in the, in the homework, we're not going to ask you, and even on the test, we won't be asking you to find the angles of these triangles and quadrilaterals, okay? Really all we're doing is comparing the sides and seeing if they are proportional. If they're proportional, when we simplify those fractions, you'll get a number that is equal to the other one. That's how we know they're proportional. If they're not equal, they're not similar. Like in this example, 3 fourths is not equal to 2 thirds. Therefore, they are not similar. All right, so this is an example. We've got A and B. Describe the transformation. The transformations that take W, X, Y, Z and transform it into A, B, C, D. All right. Well, it doesn't look like there's been any reflecting or rotating here. It looks like all that's happened, and again, the order of this isn't going to matter. Uh, looks like what has happened is it's been translated. And then after that, they dilated it because notice, uh, in this case, quadrilateral W, X, Y, Z is bigger than quadrilateral ABCD. So 
it's automatically been dilated and then it's just been moved. It hasn't been rotated at all. It's not reflected because we can see, according to these lines, B has two angle marks and angle X has two angle marks. Therefore, angle X is corresponding with angle B. They're in the same position. They're in the right top of both quadrilaterals. So there's no reflecting going on here or rotating. Find the missing measure. Okay, well, the missing measure looks like it's M. So we'll want to find M. Okay. Well, M is line XY, which cor corresponds with line CB. All right. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take W, X, Y, Z and make that our denominator. So I'm going to have these two fractions. And again, W, X, Y, Z will be in the denominator. So X, Y is going to be M. And its corresponding value on the other quadrilateral B, C will be in the numerator in the same fraction. Its value is 12. Now I can compare any of these other sides, however we can see A, B is not given and W, Z is not given either. So we, what we do have though is that D, C and Y, Z are given. So once again Y, Z is part of quadrilateral W, X, Y, Z so it will be in the denominator 15, and DC, part of quadrilateral ABCD, is its corresponding value, so that's where 10 goes, okay? From here, all we're going to do is use the Fishy method in order to solve this, just like we would with any other proportion, okay? So, to do this, let's take a look. All we're going to do is we got multiply, divide, equals M. And we're just going to fill in these values here. So if we go to M, we'll go up to 12. So that's our first number. We'll cross to 15. We'll come up here to 10. And then we'll bring it back to M. So that's M. There, okay. So 12 times 15 divided by 10. It looks like M here is 18. This example did not give us any units. So as it turns out, 18 is M. This is our final answer for the missing measure, M.